Hello, my name is Lee Tonito and I'm the CEO of the Australian Marketing Institute. I'm here today with Sarah and Andrew at 60A. Hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Six Degrees of Association, the only online TV show that's dedicated to the pursuit of association success. My name is Sarah Gonzalez from Redback Conferencing and once again I'd like to welcome my co-host Andrew McCullum from Association of Corporate Counsel Australia. Hello. Hello Sarah, good to We're be back again. We're almost there. We're past the halfway mark. I know. We've done well, I think. I think we've done well. Not bad. <laughs> Des despite what some critics would say. Yes, and we'll get to that feedback mm. later on. <laughs> However, I'd like to firstly welcome another special guest for this season, Lee Tonito, the CEO of the Australian Marketing Institute. How are you, Lee? I'm fantastic, Sarah, and thanks very much for having me. And hi, Andrew. Oh, great nice to, to meet you. Great to meet you and great to have you here. Thank you. I'm sure we're going to get into some, into some really great, great stuff when it comes to the Australian Marketing Institute. But first of all, let's go back to Thumbs Up and Thumbs Down, a regular segment. And I'll kick it off to my co-host, Andrew, to kick it off, I guess. Thank you, Sarah. And i um, pleased to give a thumbs up to a fantastic product I've been reading about called mm -hmm. MailJoy. Um, it's a platform for direct mail and produces a highly personalised uh, member postcard that can obviously be used to sell the benefits of membership. I think not just membership, but events potentially mm. as well. Uh, we know in our sector, in the association sector, that direct mail is really, really effective in mm -hmm. terms of marketing, but it is not very cost effective mm. uh, as opposed to compared, for example, to say mass email. The great thing about mail joy is that it simplifies that process. It doesn't exactly make it just as cost effective, but it certainly makes it a lot closer. So okay. a really good product. Worth a look, uh, mailjoy.com is the website. So you upload it and then it creates these postcard type things for Yeah, you, but it's it? personalised. Oh, so it's, nice. it's, a, it's a HTML system which yep. sets it up really, really well. So yeah, definitely worth having a look for our uh, sector. Great. And uh, which leads me to a thumb, thumbs down, obviously. Yep. Uh, what, what goes up must come down. So um, many of our viewers would know Stephen Durkin recently stepped down as the CEO of Engineers Australia after five years in the role. And while we never deny anyone's right to move to a different direction, mm. um, you know, my, I really hope that Stephen is not lost to our sector. Uh, Stephen came from a very, very long and successful, I understand, banking career mm -hmm. um, before moving into the role with Engineers Australia. And, you know, we've spoken on this show about how associations, the association sector needs to build career paths. Mm. And we need to keep a lot of really highly talented people like Stephen in our industry, in our sector, because, you know, the experience he has, the capabilities he has are mm. really important. And my fear is, uh, by all accounts, that uh, we're going to lose people like uh, Stephen from the sector, so, mm. which is a great shame, I think. And I think that's a really good point. Um, we discussed this a few episodes ago about the need to really encourage leadership and growth within mm. associations. Um, it would be great to even just do one whole topic on that on one episode. And if anyone out there as a CEO of an association or someone who's been through the ranks and had that experience could get in touch, it would be great to chat to them about how we can get the knowledge and spread the word out there to everyone else. Yeah, as I say, and someone who's, you know, gone through from a climb the career ladder if you yeah. like through the sector and through to a CEO so oh. hopefully yeah hopefully as I say the likes of Stephen will stay around and continue mm. to uh, dare I say it, share his uh, experience with the next generation. Yeah farewell Stephen we hope you stay mm. with us. <laughs> um, so going to go to my thumbs up. Mm, please. Introduce me. Sarah, would you like to do your thumbs up and thumbs down? Thank you. So um, a few episodes ago, we had Damien from ADA here, yep. and we were talking about, um, I think it was your thumbs up, we had a discussion, so your thumbs down around marketing and membership, how it needs to be standalone, and these mm, people need to be recognised and not undervalued. So... Someone's been listening to you. I think we've gone global because I recently read in associations on associations.org over in the US, they've done some research and more associations are actually implementing these strategies when it comes to creating better content. And they're now starting to create specific roles. So here's an example. We've got the AANA, American Association of Nurse Anesthesiasts. Got that one Sorry, right. I that. Say it again. <laughs> I'm not saying that again. They've implemented teams to focus on social media strategy and online communities. So they find they can leverage content better by having a sing single point within the association delivering that. 
Okay. Yep. And then the other one is a New Jersey Society of CPAs, and they've actually created a content steering team. So that's a team that gets together, they talk about what's hot with members, and then they talk about how they're going to address their issues, and then they go and do it. So they've got dedicated people focusing on these types of things that need to be focused on, really. Mm. And I think that's great. That's amazing. I mean, you, you know, you, so much sort of social media is about pushing content out there, mm. pushing content out, seeing what seeing what gets a bite, if you like. Yeah. So fantastic that they're being a bit more proactive and actually, okay, what do our members need? What are the hot topics? Exactly. And then following the process from there. So. And that brings us to another point, which we'd probably have to talk about in another episode, which is gated content, because mm. one of the things they spoke about... Is that about, your thumbs down, is it? Well, no, I won't get into that. But anyway, okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> so um, my thumbs down, thank you for cutting me short there, um, is... Really people not looking outside the box mm. and it's a bit cliche this whole think outside the box and the square but I'm a big sure. fan of it and I think we all need to actually do it a little bit more especially within the sector. So we consult um, to a lot of associations when it comes to their CPD strategies and taking that digital and many don't actually know about their return on investment or why they're actually running these programs and a lot of the reasons are oh well everyone else in the sector is doing it. So yeah. we need to be doing it. And it's like, okay, we get why you want to do it, but why don't you start looking outside, look to government, look to corporates and start to see how they're doing things. Look sure. outside the for-profit, do you know what I mean? And start to get some more understanding and build that knowledge gap between the sectors. You know, we're all friends here. We can all learn from each other. Mm. And I think there's so many other organisations out there outside the sector doing great, great things that we can all learn from and be amazing at the end of the day. Yeah, no, you're exactly right, and people are, you know, people are willing to share that information. Yeah. They're happy to share their good stories and what what's worked and what hasn't. So. Yeah. Why not? So there must my thumbs up and thumbs down. Mm. So we just spoke a little bit about content and social media and marketing. We and touched on a lot there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we, we did. Really did. I'm pr I'm pretty excited and pumped. I hope you are, Lee. Very much so. Ah, oh, look. Excellent. <laughs> so um, yeah, consistent with what I'm about to say so I'm really happy what a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us um, you've mm. been part of the AMI since 2014 you joined as CEO yes how's it all going oh it's going um, extremely well um, I have uh, spent a lot of time with the AMI mainly as a volunteer mm -hmm. so I was uh, I've been associated with the AMI for 20 years Wow um, 18 years as a volunteer and a couple of years as the CEO um, I was on the board for six years and chair for three of those years um, and uh, so recently, last September, reappointed as CEO. So it's always a Congrats. pleasure that um, there's going to be some continuity of leadership and the board. And so I'm delighted to be mm. able to make a contribution. Excellent. Great to have you here. Mm. So um, we, we know a little bit about the AMI, but can you just explain what um, the Australian Marketing Institute does um, as the preeminent brand for marketers in Australia? Um, we know that your purpose is to provide cutting edge marketing theory and practice to professional marketers. How do you actually go about achieving this? Uh, well, in terms of providing cutting edge marketing theory, um, we achieve this purpose by accrediting and endorsing uh, tertiary university degrees, mm -hmm. um, the vet sector, um, as well as higher education. Yep. And I'm delighted to tell you, Sarah and Andrew, that we currently have 17 universities and some 34 marketing degrees across Australia wow. accredited. And that's a very important program because what mm. it does is actually ensure the job readiness mm -hmm. because we assess programs based on their work integrated learning. Um, and also that the curricula is uh, current and relevant mm -hmm. to industry's needs. And uh, so we're delighted that so many universities are embracing the concept to be accredited by the professional uh, body for marketing in Australia. Mm. And uh, we have, uh, yes, yeah, so we're in discussions with the um, vet sector at the moment to expand that because we're all about improving capability and professionalism in mm. marketing. Fantastic. Um, in terms of providing cutting edge practice, um, our 2016 um, insight survey showed that marketers wanted the AMI to sh help them with um, improving progress in their careers mm -hmm. through professional development. And during 2016, we put a great deal of focus um, into developing a range of initiatives that was going to help people at every career stage um, that they're in, whether they're leaving university all the way through to the latter stages of their careers. And so I can sit here today and honestly say we have Australia's most comprehensive professional development program. 
Um, we have over 30 classroom setting workshops, 45 online training, and we also have a diploma of business specialising in digital marketing. Mm. Um, there's over 63 disciplines in marketing, mm. and as the umbrella body for marketing in Australia, you'd expect us to have a very comprehensive offering yeah. um, for people across their careers, and I'm delighted to say we have that today. Very good. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've touched on so much there. We've got uh, accreditation, career mm. progression, thought leadership, mentoring. Um, one thing I'm interested in is, you know, you're obviously a marketer yourself, but interested a bit in the brand strategy at AMI. Um, you know, how do you go about heading that up? Uh, the, um, it, for us, it really goes back to uh, making sure that um, we have a brand that's relevant and trusted in the minds mm. of marketers. Um, we, from our research, and I'll go right to the top in the workforce, we know that one in two adults in the working population have something to do with marketing in their mm. roles. Yeah. Um, because, Andrew, I'd put to you, who, who isn't about um, increasing customers, retaining customers, or improving the customer experience these days? Mm. Yeah. So point. we think that marketing, in some ways, is actually a life skill. Mm. And um, so our brand needs to um, infuse that type of thinking, skills and capabilities into the workforce, whether it's um, the customer experience you get when you grab that cup of coffee first thing in the morning, all the way through to very sophisticated you know, digital marketing uh, programs. Um, we know that our um, strategic intent is all about um, being a conduit between academia and industry. Um, and we want to make sure that we create compelling, relevant value propositions that are fuelled by great professional development. Um, and our commercial success, we believe, is all about, um, not about the AMI, it's all about the strength of talent um, in each individual member of our association, but also marketing more more broadly. Mm. So this is why this opportunity to speak to you today is so important to us mm. because we want to get the message out that if you're in an association, marketing is actually the lifeblood to growing your top line and improving your profitability. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. I mean, you're talking, you know, the strength of the association is measured by the knowledge of the members. Um, but in terms of members, I mean, how do you AMI is a huge organisation. How do you go about maintaining that consistency of service to those members that are so valuable to your, uh, to your brand? I um, feel that we are absolutely blessed, first of all, by over 150 volunteers mm. within the AMI. Um, and we also have a great band of very talented staff who all have an intrinsic motivation um, around the importance of the work we do. And so when you're onboarded, and when you're, if you will, oriented within the AMI, if you want to pro help provide cutting edge marketing theory and practice to fuel progress in the careers of marketers in Australia, then we're the place for you. Mm. If, if that's mm. your passion, if you're yep. interested in contributing, then, and I think that's a really important part. Um, we also believe in the concept of utility, and so we're here to help. Um, and that's a very important part of our culture. Um, I often say that we'd like to be the Google of marketing in Australia. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we've built a network um, of over 46,000 people within yeah. our community. And so if you have a need within marketing, um, we know the guy that will, will be able to help you. We can put you um, with, in touch. With the need. And whether that's at the small to medium enterprise level, whether that's at the association level, we're here to help, we're here to give you utility and meet your needs. Mm. Um, we spend a lot of time also collaborating and we think it's really important with our associations, mm. both trade associations and professional associations. Um, the market isn't large enough um, and so when I first came, as opposed to choosing to compete, I believe in the concept of co opetition Mm. Um, and so I went to my CEO peers at the Market Research Society, ADMA, AANA, PR, um, Promotional Products, um, Point of Sale, um, IAB, mm. and said, look, if you actually believe that there's six million people with some interest in marketing here in Australia, um, then we, we should band together and figure out how we actually elevate the capability and professionalism. And is that something of, of interest of to you? Mm. Yeah. And they all went, yeah, that is. And so from those conversations, we've 
figured out ways um, to cooperate and collaborate and it's been um, fantastic because there's a lot of co points of parity in associations, um, even with corporate councils, I'm sure. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and um, so uh, with, with the Australian Marketing Institute. And so with those points, we're able to help each other. Mm. And I think that that's uh, done really well um, in terms of building um, marketing knowledge across associations. I love that idea, that co-opetition. I think so many more organisations, whether mm. they're in the sector or out, need to stop focusing on their competitors and how they can mm. sort of compete with them and focus on the greater good for everyone. So kudos yes. to you. Yes, we, we believe our only asset is our members mm. and marketing professionals. Yeah. Um, it isn't um, with ego that we operate in the market. We only exist for our members. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we've found like-minded um, associations that we partner with to um, do uh, good and mm. let marketing prosper. Mm. Now you briefly just touched on um, the role of the marketer within associations um, and I think this is something we've covered almost on every episode this season. I think it's something we really need to focus on. So um, how important do you think the role of marketing is within associations, um, especially when it comes to digital marketing? Because marketing? there seems to be this argument between digital, online, print, print. and the traditional way of doing things. So mm. what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think for an association to grow, it needs member relationships. Um, and we believe in an effective and efficient integrated marketing plan mm. based on your business objectives. Yep whether that's in associations, um, driving members, acquiring them, mm -hmm. retaining them, growing share of wallet, you need a different marketing plan yeah. um, using your owned assets and non-owned assets and owned paid media mm -hmm. to support your business goals. So to me, it all starts with what are your business objectives and then a tailored integrated marketing communications program to actually meet those mm. needs. So we're um, media agnostic yep. because it's all driven by what are your business goals yeah, definitely. and what the marketers, the effective marketers are all about really getting into what are the needs of members, mm. understanding their needs, um, what are their motivations um, and as I think we spoke about the Jersey CPAs and the anaesthetists, listening is absolutely critical. Mm. You know, we um, spend a lot of time listening to our members. We have great partners in uh, Vision Critical. We do a senior marketers monitor. So we stay really close to our members mm. to serve up content um, that is relevant to them. And we do a lot of lead nurturing for membership acquisition mm. and event registration, um, and even our awards program, um, talking about the topics that are you know, of interest. And it all starts with listening to what their needs are and serving up great knowledge to help educate mm. them and fuel progress in their careers. Great. And like many of our guests, you've had experience both in the corporate and in the association space. Mm. What do you love about the sector? What gets you up every morning and just raring to go and get oh, into it? Um, Sarah, I think I have the best job in the world yeah. um, because I have, I'm doing my passion every mm. single day. Um, I get out of bed, I leap out of bed <laughs> because there's always so much opportunity mm. um, and I operate in a for purpose way. Um, I have fantastic stakeholders that I meet, um, opportunities to talk about what I love which is you know the marketing profession and uh, that's what uh, that's why I'm here because after a very solid uh, FMCG and services career um, and making a contribution in that way, I'm actually every day, I hope, making a contribution to fostering um, marketing professionalism in Australia. Great to hear. Mm. Don't want to get much Fantastic. better than that, someone who loves their job. Isn't that great Very to hear? Very much so. It's a real privilege. I love my job. I just don't know if I can jump out of bed every morning. <laughs> I'm with. I might injure myself <laughs> if I do that. <laughs> There's, there's some props around there. Thank you so much. Great to get mm. some more insight into AMI. Um, great to see the work you're doing and how passionate you are, not only about your members, but also the industry as well. Um, please stay with us because Andrew's also mm. passionate about something and he's going to share that with us now. Good. And that's some of the world's most ob obscure associations. So every fortnight we ask Andrew to go out, search the wonderful World Wide Web and come to us with some information on an association that he thinks is a little bit different. What have you come up with? Thanks, Sarah. I am passionate about obscure associations. I'm also, also passionate about baseball. Um, 
my Boston Red Sox in particular. One day I'll tell you about that time I went to the game and was oh. on. We actually got to go on the grass. It's all of fun. Um, but those, yes. Yeah, so today, uh, in within those themes of passion baseball, I'm very pleased to introduce the Tennessee Association of Vintage Baseball. The TAVB, as I like to call them, were established in 2012 with the purpose of entertaining and educating by recreating the civility of 19th century baseball. Wow. Hard to think of a nobler cause than that. Uh, there is a serious side of the uh, association. They aim to provide cultural enrichment and education programs that emphasise honour, team play, respectful conduct and community pride. And some of those, let's face it, some of those things are lacking in mm. sport today. Um, a total of 12 clubs form the uh, association, the TAVB. Um, there's some super names there too, yeah. Sarah. Let me, let me just read you a couple. Um, we have the Emmett Machinists of Knoxville. Yep. The Lightfoot Club of Chattanooga. And the Quick Steps Club of Spring Hill. Mm. So some good names there. So there you have it, the TAVB. Uh, good on them for remembering and reliving what is obviously an all too forgotten time in uh, history that of 1860s baseball. So well done to you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to feature you on this segment. I feel like I know more about the TAVB than baseball in general now. So thank you. I feel like my life is almost complete. Yeah, well, there's a lot to know, but uh, happy to help thank you Thank you. Um, ding, ding, two minute warning. So um, this brings us close to the end of the show. And this is where we are accountable for the good and the bad and the amazing things that um, we've attracted over the past few episodes. Um, so first of all, we did have some feedback um, and that was regarding the thumbs up that we showcased um, AIST, the Australian Institute of Super annuation trustees. Great to see associations focusing on good governance. It's critical and I don't think many realise. So thank you, Tracy, for that feedback. I agree with that and I think, Lee, I you would as well. well. Governance is sometimes, so. like marketing and membership within an organisation, sometimes undervalued. So I think definitely something we need to talk more about. Very much so. Mm. Any feedback that you've heard through the grapevine? No, but it's probably worth mentioning again that our next episode, we will be live yes. at the ACE conference. So very excited about that and very excited to announce our special panellists, guest panellists in a couple of days as well. So can't get to uh, can't, Who is can't that? share any names <laughs> as yet, as you know, but uh, we're very close and very excited to uh, welcome that person to the desk in, uh, in Sydney. Excellent. Thank you. So, and yeah, it's almost you. the wrap of the season. Like you said, the next one will be live from ACE, OZAE, mm -hmm. their uh, national conference down at the ICC in okay. Sydney. So make sure you get there and catch us live. We'll also be recording that content and hosting it on demand. So that brings us to the end. Sorry, it's a sad moment, but thank you, Andrew, as Thanks. always. Thanks, Sarah. An absolute pleasure. Very enjoyable as always. And Lee, thank you thank so much you. for joining us. Thanks, it's been great to have you on. Thank you. Too. As always, you can view all the on-demand episodes at sixdegreesofassociation.com. Feel free to share your feedback by contacting us directly or hashtagging 6DA because like we've discovered today, we all love a bit of social media and digital. And also just remember that next time we'll be live from AUSAE, so make sure you tune in. And another thing to remember, too much conversation always kills a chat. Bye for now. Yay. Yay. It's good. Thank you. You're happy with that? Yes. yes.